Okay, so colours, the bane of existence for every beginner pixel artist. Now, I would not call myself by any means a professional in colours, which is why you'll see that most of my work uses a very small set of colours, and most of those colours are actually quite simple. However, I do think I've gotten to a point where my poor colour skills does not affect the rest of my work. So yeah, let's just dive into some of the common mistakes here. Number one, the big mistake I see people make is when they're going to shade something, all they do is grab the colour that they have, go into this little bit over here, and just make it that tiny bit darker, and decide, yep, that works. This does not work. This does not look good. Now, I do think I took this approach for quite a while. It was only until I was introduced to the concept of hue shifting that I then stopped. So in this case, I'll take this colour, this little red here, and I'm wanting to get a darker version of this colour. So what I'll do is I'll look down here at the old colour section, and I will move it closer towards the blue. So that's the hue shift and then I'll make it a bit darker, and maybe I'll increase the saturation. And so then we end up with something that looks a bit more like this, versus like this. So okay, let's talk about that shift that we did down here. The rule I make is, if it's going to be a darker colour, move it closer towards the blue. Now if it's going to be a lighter colour, then we move it closer to the yellow, and that will apply to whatever colour we're using. So let's say I'm trying to shade a green, well then I'll say, okay, I now want a darker version of this green, so I'll move closer to the blue. Or I now want a lighter version of this green, so I'll move closer to yellow. And that's the general rule that I live by. Now is that going to work in every situation? Is that going to be the best approach in every situation? No, right? The colour experts out there are going to think of something way more advanced. In this case, I'm just looking for something reliable that I can use to not have to worry about what colours I'm choosing. So to reiterate that again, if we want the colour to be lighter, warmer, then we move it to the warmer colours. If we want it to be darker, in other words cooler, then we move it to the cooler colours. Okay, that's the basic rule. Okay, number two, don't use pure black. Apparently it's a bad thing to do. Now my understanding of why you should never use black is that I suppose it makes things more jarring. It's, it's sort of more difficult to look at. And so what I generally do is just take the black and then I'll replace it with something like that. It's pretty close to black, but it's not complete black. Apparently it makes things look less harsh. I'll be honest, sometimes I even forget to not use pure black, and so it's not the end of the world if you do use pure black, but from what I heard it's best to use something that's close to black, but not 100%. Okay, so number three, not using enough contrast. Okay, this kind of leads on from one of the other points, where people get into the habit of just taking whatever colour they're using, and then increasing the darkness. Another thing people do, or a very similar thing people do, is they use a bunch of colours, but without really any distinction between them, and it ends up looking very messy and not that appealing. If you are someone who has no interest in learning colours on an advanced level, I'd say stick to just using a limited amount of colours with high contrast, rather than trying to play around with these low contrast colours, trying to do these subtle little things like that. I see a lot of this, to be honest, where it's just the colours are this much different. And it, for one, it just adds complications, right? It's Especially if you're animating, because now you have to consider this little pixel here, which isn't actually offering too much to the overall sprite, and yet you still have to spend the time animating it. But at the same time, it also just doesn't really add anything. All it really does is just kill the sharpness of the sprite. Now, if you know what you're doing with colours, then you can probably do this sort of thing in a way that actually looks nice, right? You can execute it in a way that's not disgusting. <laughs> in my case, I have no interest in doing this kind of subtleness. So I tend to say, scrap that, and scrap all this stuff over here as well. And let's just bump up the contrast, right? So if there is a different colour somewhere on that sprite, let's make it actually noticeable. Let's make it so when we're zoomed out, we can actually see that there is a difference in colour there. I'm not doing anything too fancy with blurring stuff or, you know, blending in colours. I'm using a very limited amount of colours with a high amount of contrast. I'm keeping it simple, I'm not overcomplicating anything, because if I do overcomplicate it, then we'll end up with something very messy. So I tend to keep it simple by doing this. Less colours more contrast. Okay, so the last tip for people who aren't really too bothered about learning colours and understanding them on a deep level, my recommendation would just be to use 
palettes which already exist. I mean, there's this website, which I'm on now, called Low Spec, and it's just a bunch of palettes which people have uploaded for you, and you can download them, grab a screenshot, whatever, add them to the software you're using, and then do your work based on them. One last thing I'll say about this is, if you do want to get some basic understanding of how to use colours, and if you don't have a basic understanding, I do recommend getting a basic understanding, because as I've said before, it does tend to ruin your work if you don't know what you're doing on some fundamental level. So what I would recommend is at least having a look at some of the work that people have already done, putting them into some software of some kind, and then analysing their colours. Picking apart the palette, going over each colour with an eyedropper tool, and then seeing what's going on, right? How are they moving from one colour to another? How are they changing their hue? How much of the brightness is changing? How much of the saturation is changing? And if you do this just a few times, really, on some of the people whose work you admire, who has a colour use that you kind of want to replicate, then you should eventually pick up the general approach to take. You should eventually understand how to do something similar. Or if you're using those palettes that I talked about earlier, right, the ones you can steal online, then you'll probably learn in the same way. Just by using them over and over again, you'll eventually realise, okay, okay, what's going on here? How is this colour different to that colour? Right, you'll pick these things up, and I do think that is a good starting point. Rather than saying, screw it, time to improvise, I'm just going to play around with the colour picker, like some kind of five-year-old. The point is, I wouldn't recommend having a go at colours when you don't really know what you're doing. Anyways, I think I'll leave it there for now. Of course, there's going to be way more things to know about colours, way more advanced things, and I might talk about some of those things in the future. But yeah, I'll leave it there.